Tower, chill at Zulu Kilo with inbound details. Chill at Zulu Kilo, Coffs Tower. Chill at Zulu Kilo, VFR Warrior, 2 POB. Approaching down Bucker at 3500. Receive Delta, request airways clearance from A03. Jet Zero Kilo, clearance not available, remain outside Class Delta airspace, expect clearance at time 10, time now 07. Remain outside Class Delta airspace, Julia Zero Kilo. This pilot is on the horns of a dilemma, and his next decision is dependent upon his situational awareness. But what is situational awareness? Well, one thing's for sure, it's a term that's bandied around by a lot of people. But what does it really mean? Without situational awareness, you might as well be flying on pure hope. One's ability to identify and respond to changes in the immediate environment. It's part of airmanship, it's very important. You really have to actually look out while concentrating and flying the plane. I think it's knowing what other aeroplanes are in the circuit. Knowing your surroundings well. Maintain the big picture overview of where the aircraft is. It's knowing where you are in the world. This understanding of the whole environment and how it's going to interact with you. An awareness of absolutely everything that's going on in your environment. Whoa, there are lots of different opinions. We really need to define what SA, or situational awareness, is. Dr. Micah Ensley, who's written numerous books on the subject and is a guru of SA, says this. Situational awareness is the perception of the elements in the environment within a volume of time and space, the comprehension of their meaning and the projection of their status in the near future. Crikey, that's a little long-winded. So let's look at it from another angle. The military have simplified it into three core phrases. What's happened, what's happening and what might happen. So it's knowing your past, your present and being able to predict the future. But situational awareness is tricky to define. So let's strip back the layers. The first thing you need to consider is your own mental toughness. Now, someone who should know is Dr Sandy Gordon, a sports psychologist and advisor to the Australian cricket team. Characteristics of mentally tough performers are uh, what you'd expect. People who uh, perform well under pressure consistently and they bounce back from adversity, they deal with failure uh, very, very well. Mentally tough people are also able to keep going when they're successful. That's what you need to fill your head with, the success images, because that's what you'll get more of. If, if you focus on what not to do and weaknesses, that's what you'll get. You'll get more of them, because what you focus on grows. You want to focus on solutions, you want to focus on things that work. If I asked you to not think of a pink fluffy elephant, don't think of a pink fluffy elephant, you can't help yourself. Oh, there's a thing on the dice, you know, on the fluffy uh, pink elephant in the car. Because your brain doesn't distinguish between do's and don'ts. It, so fill your brain, fill your headspace with do's, things that you want. We do know that pilots that uh, have what we call mental baggage that goes along with them in the aircraft, like high levels of stress, and maybe financial or personal difficulties. If they take that on board the aircraft with them, uh, that, that's potentially a problem because part of their mind is, is worrying about the problems that they may have and they're therefore not devoting all their mental resources to the, the flying task. Now, if it's a simple flying task, it may happen without too much drama, but if an emergency happens or the workload suddenly goes up, then they've got all this distracting you know, mental baggage in the background that can interfere with their ability to handle the situation as well as they might. So now that your brain is tuned up, what about your body? Exercise and good nutrition contribute to being able to think clearly and keep a heightened awareness. If you're not fit, you could compromise the way you make decisions, and the wrong decision can be fatal. If you get between half an hour and an hour of exercise on most days, this can help you relax and reduce stress, gain more energy and even help you sleep better. It's part of making you an all-round professional. There are a lot of things that a pilot can do uh, prior to flight to help make sure that they perform adequately during the flight. And these things include fatigue, making sure that the pilot gets an adequate rest the night before the flight, making sure they've eaten, making sure they've had enough to drink so that they're adequately hydrated because uh, uh, low blood sugar and dehydration can affect the performance of the brain which is going to clearly affect your ability to maintain situational awareness. Other things include uh, the effect of alcohol and drugs, clearly they can affect your uh, cognitive performance as well, and stress 
making sure that you're not uh, worrying about other issues when you really should be concentrating on flying. We're preparing not just 15 minutes before a flight, we're preparing five and six days before a flight. So I'm here in Perth, Australia, 12 hours out of my time zone. I've been here for eight days already. The first three days I came here just to start to transition. And then I also watch what I eat, watch uh, how I sleep, watch what I drink. I don't drink any caffeine during the race week so I can go to bed on time. So it's a matter of being prepared really a long time in advance for one of these kinds of flights. Bit by bit, we're putting together the elements that make up good situational awareness. Now it's time to look at how we should prepare for a flight. I personally think a flight starts weeks ahead. If you said to me, go flying right now, I would, I would say, OK, I can go flying right now, but actually, you need time to think about it. You cannot plan a flight enough. There's no such thing as over planning a flight. And asking what if, what if this happens? What if the weather's not very good? What if the grass is waterlogged? What if the fuel drain shows water in it? What if, you know, if you have a plan for every what if, then, uh, then you're going to be pretty well prepared. Imagery or visualization is about mentally rehearsing the what ifs, seeing yourself doing it uh, masterfully, uh, successfully, and feeling your confidence from doing that, but also helping you focus at the right time. The command of an aeroplane doesn't just start the moment you get into an aeroplane, nor are the skills all built in an aeroplane. Everything plays its part, the theory training, the simulator training, the whole lot. We have found that there is an extreme connection between the confidence of the person in their everyday life and their confidence and then competency in the air. And so we introduced this program through Toastmasters and other leadership activities, camping, trips away, uh, hangar flying sessions where we sit down. Those things are important to building the command and leadership that allows the person to confidently add up the situation and take command. I'm going Bankstown to Cowra and back today. And in addition to all the usual stuff, like checking the weather and having current maps and charts, I've been thinking about the flight for about a week visualising all aspects and considering the what-ifs. Things like planning the safest route, not necessarily the most direct. So I've planned via Katoomba due to the terrain. That way in an extreme emergency, I'll have some options and won't have to land in Yowie and Panther country. Well, I've finished all my planning. It's time to go flying. The last thing I'm going to do is clean the windshield. It might seem like a little thing, but it's not. Bugs and dirt can create focal traps for my eyes, and I need to be looking out. Good situational awareness, if a part has it, allows that pilot to have enough spare mental capacity that they can plan for the next step in the flight. Mm. So if they're coming up to a reporting point, they can make sure that they're on the correct frequency well ahead of that position. And if they're getting to a point where they have to make a, an inbound radio call, then they're on the right frequency, they've got the data ready to transmit, uh, well ahead of the point where they need to actually do it. So that they're not rushed when they get to that point. Uh, and if they're rushed when they get there, there's a potential for that to be missed or be delayed. Uh, and that can obviously cause its own problems. 